Kelly and I went over several times of whether or not we should do the electric hog netting from Premier One, which would allow us to be a lot more mobile, or if we should just spend the money to get hog panels. We have three pigs, but today we're gonna to talk about several things. First, we're gonna meet the pigs and we're gonna go over the pig pen, the infrastructure that we have so far that we're holding them in temporarily, as well as electric fencing. And also we're going to talk about what we're planning on doing with these pigs and selling them. And you need to wait till the end because I'm gonna have a cool little freebie for you that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. All right, so these are mostly red wattle pigs. The sow is all red wattle and the boar is a red wattle Hampshire cross. Kelly and I learned at the Homesteaders of America conference, we learned it from a uh, hand hewn farm. They said that some of the best pork it comes not from heritage breed pigs. It comes from mutts. Whenever you cross a couple of different breeds, it can be whenever you get really, really good, hearty, healthy, and yummy pork. So that's who they are. We have three of them. They are all male, and yes, we castrated them. I actually helped hold the pigs down. I didn't do the castration, but I wanna show you some clips of whenever we first brought the pigs home, and then we're gonna talk about the fencing, so don't go away. We're silent. <gasps> You're so cute. No, this is perfect. Yes. They like it. <laughs> they do. I love that You're the first one, Ollie. I haven't even done it yet. They're gonna be some good bacon. <gasps> Don't say that right now. Good job, buddy. I never thought I could pet Shelvin the day I tried to. Good Shelvin. Can I get out now? Okay, so one of the things that was stressful in the beginning, because I've never done it before, was where we're going to house these piglets. Kelly and I went over several times of whether or not we should do the electric hog netting from Premier One, which would allow us to be a lot more mobile, or if we should just spend the money to get hog panels. And the reason why we went this route to go hog panels first, which I'll show you the full tour of that, we call Premier One, and, and we like Premier One. We have their chicken netting, so it's, it's a really, really good product. The one downside to Premier One, whenever you're starting off with pigs, is they also said, as well as Darby Simpson said this, is that their Premier One is not a physical barrier. It is a uh, mental barrier. It is a visual barrier. It, it a lot, it's a pain barrier is what they call it. The piglets, and, it, and we witnessed that when we first put them in here. Oh, there it was. 
that you oh, can't yeah. come in yet. Whoa. They're just checking to see how far they can go. I saw piggies were pink. Some piggies are pink. Ooh, that thing got loose. These hog panels, they really wanted to run away. They were scared. They would have just plowed through the hog netting. So you really need to have the investment in some hog panels, some uh, good quality T-posts first off so that you can train them. So you need a physical barrier on the outside and train them to an electric fence. And for us, it just wasn't worth it to purchase all this and then also go and purchase the hog netting. I think maybe one day we will want to try that. But right now what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna stick with the hog panels and the electric poly wire. All right, so let's now go over the pig pen. All right, so this pig pen is made out of heavy gauge hog panels, which are 16 feet long and about what is this like three feet high i'm not really sure how high this is but it is plenty for pigs and what i have is i have one panel wide by two panels long you as you can tell they've been here a week this had a decent amount of grass in it and it is they're they're starting to root it up for sure i think this is probably only going to last them for one more week and then we will have to uh, move them Probably the only hard thing to do with these panels was doing the clips, the clips on these guys, because it's it gets so small down here the where the panels get smaller for the piglets to, to not get out. Is getting these clips on the T-post, that was a pain in the boot. It was, it was not fun. I would say that constructing this whole thing took me maybe, three or four hours. Our plan, what to do with the pig pen, is we are going to invest the same amount of money a second time. So we'll construct the three sides over here. Then all I have to do is just remove one of the panels, let the, and then start feeding the pigs over here and then the pigs will just go over there. I can put the panel back and then th we can take this part of the pig pen up and then probably build it over here. Now you would say that's a lot of work and yes, that is a lot of work when the, the, the future plan is just using the electric poly wire, which right now I'm gonna give you the tour of the electric because that was a learning curve for me but now that i've done it i love this this thing is awesome it is so cool way more powerful i got zapped with this thing holy cow it hurt we are used to using solar powered energizers with premier one's electric uh poultry netting it's more expensive to get a solar powered energizer than to get uh, an AC plug-in one. And the good thing, that's the reason why we wanted to go this route, was because we had electric right here. So here is our electric meter. So this is our meter pole, and this does all the power for our house. And my good friend, John Michael, helped me whenever we installed this. He put in a plug right here. Now the thing with an energizer uh, that's plugged in, you need a housing for it. You, it needs to be usually in a barn or on a porch or something. You can't just leave it out in the elements. Also, you can't use an extension cord, what we've learned. So I got a little creative and looked at some ideas online and this is what I've come up with. This is a normal bin so this is a small bin from walmart this is a little storage bin and what i did is i turned it on its side and then what i did is i just drilled some screws into the bin to hold it onto the meter pole here and hung it up so there's a all it's super duper simple there's one screw here 
there's one screw at the top and then I just took the energizer and just hung it on there. This was a piece of cake, man. It was so easy to be able to do this. I, I even just drilled some holes in here in case there's any kind of water that gets in there that I can get out at the top. This was very, very simple. I'm really happy with how it's come out. It is a DIY answer to doing electric if you wanna be able to plug in and you can't think of a housing for it. Now, all of the electric fencing and hog panels, everything with the pigs was purchased at Tractor Supply. I'm not affiliated with them. So what you have, you have the ground and this was super simple to be able to hook it up. This is insulated aluminum wire that attaches from the ground. And then there's just a little hole that I drilled right there. And then that wire comes down here and then it goes into this grounding rod. Then for the fence, the red one goes down that same hole. Can you see that hole? So I just cut it with my hole saw and super simple. And then that insulated wire goes through the little forested area. Then it comes out the other side. I think this is about a 50 foot roll of uh, insulated wire. So now I know that I can buy more of this and it just works great. And then it attaches to this cool little thing right here that turns it from the insulated wire into the poly. Shout out to my buddy, Daddy Curbs, for I watched a video of his. Blake, I watched your video. This is like, it was a really helpful video for doing fencing, so I learned a lot. He said that his previous property owner just left a lot of these that he was able to use. And I would have had no idea what this is. It allows you to cross over something like a fence or anything, or if you just need a tie-in for two different things. The electricity goes from the insulated wire to the poly. It goes all the way down there to where the Piggly Wigglies are. Try not to touch this because it all of this poly wire is super duper hot. It is electrified. What happened to you? Let me see your hands. What happened? I colored four on me. You colored a lot on you. Yeah, on me. My arms. What'd you eat? What's on your face? Um, chocolate. So this little electric fence charger from Premier One doesn't read this for some reason. I don't understand why. So our pig breeder came to do a sight check for this just to kind of help us and he said, here, just touch the poly wire to some metal. All right, so then that's where that electric poly wire comes through right over there. Can you see it right there? And then it comes down and then it wraps all the way around. You're gonna need more of these little yellow insulators than you think you're gonna need. So I probably so I bought one full bag and I should have gotten two because what I didn't know is that the poly wire over here wants the the panels want to bend. They just have a natural bend to them, especially during you whenever you're transferring them. And so if the poly wire touches the metal, then they ground out. And then eventually, when the pigs get bigger, we'll add another electric wire higher than this. But since they're small, really this one is right at their no nose height. Then, once the pigs grow up enough and we've trained them properly to the fence, I think they're already trained to the poly wire, then what we can do is we can give them more space and only contain them with the poly wire so that way they'll just have two strands of poly wire no hog panels kind of creepy and scary to me but we'll be able to get them over everywhere in this area in these woods sort of like we did in that other video and we can rotate them all the way around the property all right going to talk a little bit more about infrastructure that i have and then we're going to go over the freebie at the end so we're close. 
Housing, super simple. Four pallets with, I had some scrap a roofing material for from the rabbit tractor. And it gives them a little bit of shade, put some bedding in there. Eventually I will come back and I'll put up something over here to give them some walls, but we're in Texas, so it's not all that cold. Uh, they definitely like the hay bedding, so I need to get some more hay. They're liking this. For feed, I'm just kind of, I'm just feeding them on this little mound because I want them to take this mound down and kind of level it a little bit. So they're rooting in this and it's doing the work that I wanted it to do. I think you can feed pigs on the ground. There's not poop over there. They poop kind of over on this side. So they're not eating their own poop, but they're also pigs. I'm not too worried about it. Then I got this uh, tray here for their water. This is not great. This is, they get it all muddy every single day. So pretty much every day or every other day, I have to dump it out and refill it. So it's a waste of water and it's a pain. I'm going to be purchasing a, probably a 55 gallon drum I already got the nipple and everything that I just need to do it. Just trying to find a good place to buy a food grade 55 gallon drum. If you know a place, let me know. I'd love to find out if you have a resource for those things, because that would be helpful. Okay, freebie time. With us having three pigs, we are definitely going to keep at least one half of the hog. If we end up keeping a full hog, then that's great. Putting in the work, I think we would wanna be able to keep a whole hog, but if we can find enough people to buy half hogs, then we're gonna be set. We already have one and a half of these guys sold. So we have already sold three half hogs. So that really leaves us only with another one and a half leads us to for you guys that if you're in local texas and if you're interested in getting some pastured pork so really our aim for this first round is to not make money it is to break even with our infrastructure and our feed bill that way everybody can get a really really good deal for this first round of pastured pigs we get to do it again if we like it then all of this is already paid for then we can start making just a little bit uh, of money off of raising pigs. Here, piggy, 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 piggy. Which that leads me to the freebie. I posted a question over on the Regenerative Agriculture group over on Facebook about does anybody have a spreadsheet that shares kind of all the costs in terms of raising pigs on pasture? I worked up a spreadsheet on Excel and I just wanted to see if anybody had one already. Some guys on the Facebook group said, hey, if you don't, if nobody steps up and offers their spreadsheet, then you need to. Totally fair. So that's what I want to be able to give away is I want to give away our spreadsheet, our tracker for expenses and hogs. And I'll probably also throw in, they'll have a couple of little tabs for chickens and rabbits as well. I've given you some ideas that you can just plug some numbers in and that the total will work out. But really focusing on the pig, the pork, the hog raising to where that really breaks it down in terms of whole hog and half hog. Now, I don't know a lot about cuts. So if you wanna add in the some cuts, into this spreadsheet and then send it back, then I can give it, I can update that for future use, or I can just update the whole file that you can see here, that you can always have an updated spreadsheet in the link. So I'll put a link down below so that you can get that spreadsheet so that you can track your expenses. What I've learned from Jack Spearco and Darby Simpson is that Excel never lies. Now on that spreadsheet, you'll see that we're only in January, so, the February through June and July, which is when we're planning on harvesting these and sending them to the butcher. Those are just projections. I will update this as we go with all of our expenses. 
every time I update it each month, I will send out an email and that you can get the updated uh, correct spreadsheet with the numbers. I think this is gonna be rad. This will be an ongoing thing that you can see and you can track exactly what we are spending on three hogs. Growing them, finishing them on pasture, the feed that we're going to get is going to be uh, Texas. The feed we're going to be using is Texas Naturals, non-GMO, no soy. It is the Texas Naturals is the best here in Texas. It comes out of Waco. If you're not in Texas, then you need to find a good quality feed. Texas Naturals is expensive. It's like $25 per 50 pound bag. That's why we're going to have to charge a really good amount because you are what you eat. You're eating pork and you need to have your piggies living off of good stuff. Are you gonna give them that apple core when you're done? I guess. They'll love it. Eat the whole thing, don't waste it. <laughs>